Welcome back. In the previous video, we discussed the causes of software errors. In this video, we will discuss cost of software quality. So we start our discussion on the models for cost of software quality and the first model that we will discuss here is uh, called the classic model for, so, uh, for cost of software quality. The classic quality cost model uh, was developed in uh, early 1950s by Feigenbaum and um, others and it provides a methodology for uh, classifying the costs associated with product quality assurance from an uh, economic uh, point of view. Uh, this model uh, classifies uh, costs related to product quality into uh, two general classes. As we can see here in this figure, that um, uh, uh, the cost of software quality is um, uh, classified as control costs and uh, failure of control costs. And each of these two classes uh, is further um, uh, classified uh, as uh, prevention costs and appraisal costs, for example, for control costs. And similarly, uh, for failure of control costs, uh, they include internal failure costs and external failure costs. So uh, uh, we will discuss each of these costs in detail in this slide and in upcoming slides. So first of all, uh, what is um, uh, control cost? In fact, cost of uh, control includes uh, costs that are spent to prevent and, uh, and detect errors in order to uh, reduce them to an uh, acceptable level. Then uh, cost of failure of control. Uh, this includes uh, costs of failures that occur because of uh, a failure to prevent and detect software errors. Then uh, uh, prevention costs, which is in fact a, a subcategory of uh, control costs. Um, we will have more discussion on prevention costs and other um, costs in, in the upcoming slides as well, but here I will give you an introduction. So prevention costs include investments in uh, quality infrastructure and uh, quality activities that are, are not directed to a specific project or system being uh, general to the organization. Whereas uh, appraisal costs include uh, the cost of activities performed for a specific project or a software system for the purpose of uh, detecting software errors. Uh, then uh, uh, internal failure costs, uh, internal failure costs include cost of uh, correcting errors that have been detected by, uh, like uh, through some quality assurance activities, for example, design reviews, software tests and acceptance tests and uh, like um, these are uh, uh, completed. Uh, uh, in fact, um, uh, these activities are performed uh, before uh, the software is uh, delivered to the uh, customers. Then external failure costs. External failure costs um, include all costs uh, of uh, correcting failures detected by uh, customers or uh, the maintenance team after the software system uh, has been installed on the um, uh, um, on the customer side. Now we discuss these costs in a uh, bit more detail. So first we discuss the prevention costs. As uh, the name signifies that the prevention costs are the costs that are incurred on um, of preventing the defects in the software systems so uh, uh, these costs include like investments in uh, development of uh, new or improved uh, software quality assurance infrastructure components or um, alternatively uh, uh, like regular uh, updating of those components and uh, like um, uh, these include for example uh, defining the work procedures and work instructions for these we may have to incur some costs similarly uh, developing uh, some support devices for example uh, developing uh, templates checklists they may also uh, have some costs similarly uh, software uh, configuration management systems for putting these systems in place we may have to bear some cost for example we may have uh, we may have to uh, develop some repositories for our uh, um, uh, code or other documents 
Uh, then uh, the second type of uh, prevention cause is regular implementation of SKA uh, preventive activities. And uh, in fact, uh, this uh, in, uh, includes instruction of new employees uh, in software quality assurance subjects and, uh, and the procedures uh, that are in fact uh, related to or specific to their uh, positions. Similarly, instruction of employees in new and uh, updated uh, software quality assurance subjects and uh, procedures. Similarly, uh, uh, there might be costs related to certification of employees for positions that uh, require specific uh, certification. Similarly, uh, consultations on SQA issues, um, uh, they might uh, incur some costs. Then uh, the third uh, uh, type of uh, prevention cause that we uh, that we may see here is uh, control of the SQA uh, system, and in fact, uh, uh, control of the SQA system uh, uh, through performance of, for example, uh, certain activities, for example, internal quality reviews, external quality audits. Uh, by customers and SQ system certification organizations or any other uh, bodies uh, that are authorized to perform these activities. And similarly, uh, we may have uh, uh, some costs uh, uh, that are related to management quality reviews. Then uh, appraisal costs. By appraisal costs, we mean that the costs that uh, uh, we have to bear on um, evaluation purposes or uh, for um, detecting the errors or, or defects in the software uh, processor or different work products during the development. So uh, these costs, uh, uh, like they are related to, for example, uh, reviews, like uh, when we perform reviews, for example, formal design reviews or peer reviews, we may have to uh, spend uh, some amount um, uh, to conduct these reviews because uh, sometimes the structure of these reviews that is very formal and uh, sometimes we may have to uh, pay some consultation fee or consultancy charges to uh, some external participants. So those costs, they are counted towards uh, uh, the cost of uh, 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 appraisal costs. Then uh, uh, cost of software testing. For example, we may have to perform unit testing, integration testing, uh, system testing, or acceptance testing. And in order to, uh, in order to perform these uh, types of testing, we may have to uh, purchase some uh, additional, uh, for example, software or hardware components. So uh, those costs, uh, they will also be considered as appraisal costs. Similarly, uh, costs of assuring uh, uh, quality of uh, external uh, participants, uh, primarily by uh, means of design reviews and uh, software testing. So uh, like uh, these costs, uh, they uh, might include, for example, uh, the subcontractor costs, for example. Similarly, uh, uh, suppliers of uh, commercial off the, uh, off the shelf uh, uh, software components and uh, reusable software modules. Uh, similarly, uh, the cost might be when the customer um, is included in the process as a participant um, uh, so that uh, customer can uh, provide uh, their feedback uh, in different stages. So um, uh, in that case, uh, there might be uh, some costs, for example, uh, uh, in terms of travel costs, etc., that actually are uh, considered towards um, uh, the appraisal costs and ultimately go towards the quality costs. Then uh, the next type of cost that we discuss here is internal failure costs. And uh, internal failure costs represent the cost of error correction subsequent to a formal examination of the uh, software uh, during its development and prior to the system's installation or deployment at the customer site. So uh, uh, these costs include, for example, uh, costs of uh, design are redesign that is uh, after performing uh, corrections as a result of some uh, design review activity and uh, as a result of some test findings similarly cost of uh, reprogramming or correcting the programs uh, in response to some test findings uh, they are also consider, uh, considered as the internal failure costs then uh, the cost of uh, uh, repeated design reviews and retests which is also con uh, called as regression testing 
they are also considered as uh, the internal failure cause. Uh, the next uh, type of uh, cause that we discuss here is external failure cause. External failure costs uh, or the costs that are uh, in uh, that are incurred on uh, correcting failures detected by the customers or uh, maintenance teams after this, uh, the software system has been uh, installed at the customer uh, sites. Uh, these costs may be uh, further uh, classified into uh, overt or obvious external failure costs and uh, hidden external failure costs. Uh, or typical overt external failure costs include, for example, costs of uh, resolution of uh, uh, customer complaints during the warranty period. Similarly, uh, cost of correction of uh, software bugs detect uh, detected during uh, the regular operations. Similarly, uh, the costs incurred on correction of software failures after the warranty period is uh, over, even if the correction is uh, not uh, covered by the uh, warranty. Similarly, uh, damages paid to the customers in case of a, a severe software failure detected during uh, regular operations uh, or the reimbursement of uh, customers' uh, uh, purchase costs, uh, uh, they are uh, considered uh, towards uh, the uh, overt uh, uh, external failure costs. Uh, similarly, uh, the hidden external failure costs they include, for example, damages uh, of or reduction of sales to uh, customers uh, suffering from uh, high rates of software failure. Similarly, uh, a severe reduction of sales motivated by the firm's damaged reputation. That is, in fact, again, uh, a hidden uh, failure cost that is important to consider here. And increased investment in uh, sales promotion to uh, counter the effects of uh, past software failure. That is an uh, additional cost that uh, uh, has to be uh, uh, faced here. Then uh, reduce uh, prospects to win a tender or alternatively, uh, they need to uh, underprice uh, uh, the product to prevent uh, competitors from uh, winning tenders. That is also a type of cost that uh, may be um, uh, uh, here in this uh, specific context. So in most cases, uh, it has been observed that the extent of hidden costs is much greater than that of the uh, overt costs. Then we see an other model for cost of software quality, which is called as uh, extended model of cost of software quality. And this model is in fact, uh, the extension of the classic model of soft, uh, cost of software quality that we uh, discussed in the previous slides. Uh, the extended uh, cost of software quality model uh, actually extends the classic model to, uh, in, uh, to include management's contrib uh, contributions to the total cost of software quality. Uh, according to uh, the extended model, uh, two subclasses are added uh, uh, to, uh, to complete the model's coverage. That is, uh, these classes include uh, managerial preparation and control costs. Right? Uh, managerial failure cost. So uh, as we can see in this figure that uh, uh, the rest of the uh, types of the costs they are seen as we have uh, discussed in the uh, classic model of uh, cost of software quality. But the two uh, new costs that uh, have been introduced here, uh, uh, they uh, are, uh, as we can see, managerial preparation and control costs, uh, uh, which is in fact, uh, 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 subcategory of control costs and uh, the managerial failure costs, which is uh, a subcategory of uh, failure of control costs. So uh, for the extended model of cost of software quality, we will discuss only managerial preparation and control costs and managerial uh, failure costs because the um, uh, uh, rest of the uh, uh, the types of cost uh, we have already discussed in the uh, uh, previous model. So uh, managerial preparation and uh, control costs are uh, associated with activities uh, performed to prevent managerial failures or, like, or reduce the prospects of their uh, occurrence. And uh, um, managerial preparation and uh, control costs, uh, they include, for example, costs of uh, carrying out uh, contract reviews, uh, like, uh, this might be proposal draft and uh, 
contract draft review so uh, for performing uh, or while pre uh, preparing for uh, these types of reviews we may have to uh, uh, bear some cost similarly cost of uh, preparing uh, project plans uh, uh, including the quality plans and their reviews these are also on the cost that uh, uh, might uh, that should be considered uh, while uh, estimating the cost of software quality similarly cost of periodic uh, updating of proje uh, project and quality plans uh, cost of uh, performing regular progress control of uh, internal software development efforts and uh, cost of uh, performing regular progress control of external participants contributions to the projects uh, these are in fact um, uh, some costs that uh, uh, that are related to uh, managerial aspects and uh, they are uh, actually considered uh, by the extended model of uh, cost of software quality then uh, the managerial failure costs managerial uh, managerial failure costs can be incurred throughout uh, uh, the course of software development uh, beginning in the pre project stage typical uh, managerial failure costs uh, include for example unplanned costs for professional and uh, other resources uh, resulting from uh, underestimation of the resources upon which the submitted pro uh, proposals are based uh, similarly, uh, damages paid to the customers uh, as compensation for uh, late completion of the project, which is uh, in fact a result of the unrealistic uh, schedules presented in the company's uh, proposal, and uh, hence they uh, prove as uh, a managerial failure. So those costs uh, they will be considered towards managerial uh, failure costs as well. Similarly, a uh, domino effect that is uh, uh, the damages to the other projects uh, performed by the same teams uh, involved in the delayed project so uh, these damages uh, should be considered uh, managerial failure costs of the original pro uh, projects uh, whose schedule uh, scheduling problems uh, interfered with the uh, progress of uh, other projects and hence um, uh, it uh, uh, has in fact uh, um, uh, multi uh, multi dimensional um, effects so uh, that's all about our uh, discussion on the cost of uh, software quality uh, it is important to understand that estimating uh, uh, the cost of software quality can not only um, uh, help managers gain economic control uh, over the project activities but uh, also is useful in uh, adjusting the spendings on various quality assurance activities. The materials in this video are based on the book titled Software Quality Assurance from Theory to Implementation by Daniel Cannon. For more details, you can consult the book. Thank you.